friends, how are you doing? <laughs> it has been a while since I uh, I last uh, vlogged. So, this is December 29, 2021. <laughs> this famous uh, year, <laughs> this famous historic era of COVID. And uh, I had absolutely no idea what to do during this um, New Year holidays. So, what I did, I booked a one-way flight ticket from Bucharest to Spain and I don't know the detail of how long I'm gonna be staying here what I'm gonna be doing here the only tip or the only thing I know is I want to do a road trip in the Iberian Peninsula which is Spain and Portugal so if you want to follow me in this unplanned unexpected road trip come with me waiting for the metro from the airport of Barcelona to the city center uh, the infrastructure is, uh, is sparkling and new it's brand new, sparkling clean, <laughs> whatever. And uh, yeah, there aren't uh, many people here, look. See? Oops, there are some people here, only two. So I'm taking the metro from uh, airport terminal two, and I'm going actually up to the terminal, which is Zona Universitaria. And there I'll take another metro, which is line, yeah, line three, up to my hotel. Hola amigos from Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> Welcome to this unexpected, unplanned road trip in the Iberian Peninsula. I mean by that Spain and Portugal. In case you didn't recognize it, of course you recognized it. This is La Sagrada Familia by Antoni Gaudi. And it's a beautiful, should I say summer day? So it's December 30, 2021, but the weather feels like it's summer. At least, at least 20 degrees C. Yeah, probably probably 70 uh, Fahrenheit and it truly feels like summer I just can imagine like how how hot it will be here in summer but the weather is so beautiful and the architecture no common let me show you every man toss off a full bumper let every man toss off a full bowl for a drink and be merry and drown melancholy so he a good hell to all true hearty soul. So friends, we have two options. The first one is go inside this uh, Basilica, La Sagrada Familia, and enjoy the beautiful architecture. This is a UNESCO heritage uh, monument. The second option is, I thought since the weather is nice, is to go to Park Guel, which is a an outdoor park built at the same time than the Sagrada Familia. Both of them are a UNESCO uh, heritage sites and it was also designed by the same architect Antoni Gaudi so all right so let's the visit uh, begin uh, this is a beautiful park from the late uh, the late 19th century uh, was built at the same time than uh, the Sagrada Familia and uh, they call it a uh, park Guel but actually Guel was uh, more an entrepreneur he wasn't an architect really again the architect who designed park Guel is uh, <laughs> Antoni Gaudi the same one as La Sagrada Familia and it just shows you know like how say like this is the Spain of uh, of the Industrial Revolution so that's I wouldn't say Spain I would say Catalonia it has been uh, for a long time uh, I wouldn't say independent but uh, strongly autonomous in uh, in terms of managing uh, the internal affair of, uh, of the region and uh, this is a witness of how great Catalonia was during the uh, Industrial Revolution like until today it's just it's amazing like every piece of this park is put at the right place to create this magical feeling of culture history art and somehow let's say peace wow the view is beautiful bella ciao bella ciao bella ciao ciao i think we'll hear a lot of this music The happy man.
I'm in love. I'm in love with this park. Let's let's go up there. Because it's actually built on a mountain. Uh, I'll show you the the map of the park we're on the screen. So let's go to the top. The history of Spain. So Spain is part of what we call the Iberian Peninsula or Iberia. So which is the most uh, southwestern part of uh, Europe and uh, the European Union, of course. And this is made of uh, two countries that you already know, Spain and Portugal, but also two other micronations, Gibraltar, which belongs to the United Kingdom, and Andorra, which is a sovereign independent nation between uh, France and Spain. As per who ruled uh, Spain, I guess the country saw it all <laughs> from... Uh, so the the Normans came to, um, to Spain, the Scandinavians, the Visigoths and of course the eight centuries uh, of uh, Muslim ruling uh, in Spain uh, that started with the, the arrival of the, uh, the Moroccan Berber troops in uh, around the year 700 I guess it's in the 8th century and it lasted from the time until 1492 that's actually the year where Christopher Colomb left Spain uh, Portugal to the United States to discover America a lot of the maritime and uh, the geographic uh, navigation uh, science was developed during that 8th century the 8th century of uh, Muslim ruling in Spain and that's actually what has helped uh, Christopher Colomb and those who followed him to go conquer I would say other lands and accidentally discover America so a lot of uh, actually there are I don't remember them by name but I think the most famous one is uh, Al Idrisi who was known for maritime uh, navigation the Astrolab in the Arabic language the Astrolab uh, has been invented in uh, the uh, the Islamic Empire that ruled also here in the Iberian Peninsula. Again, the Islamic Empire spread from Syria, Baghdad at the time, up to Spain. So there was like the eastern part of it and the western part of it, and they kind of were competing, especially Cordoba in Andalusia in Spain and Baghdad, because the reason why is where that uh, kind of competition came from. Uh, when uh, Baghdad became a capital of the uh, Islamic Caliphate, that's what we call the Abbasid dynasty. So what happens is that the dynasty that was just before the Abbasid were called the Umayyad. So when the Abbasid came, it was a, it was bloody, like it was a bath, yeah, bath blood. Like they killed every, I think every man who was over 13 years old, uh, they killed him. They just spared the kids and the, the females, the, the women and that lasted for a few years until they secured the reign except one Umayyad ruler his name is Abdurrahman al-Dakhil I'll try to translate it somehow <laughs> not sure how we can translate this but they named him al-Dakhil Dakhil means the one who enters the one who enters Spain from the east so he entered from Morocco why Morocco? so his father was of course a caliph a sultan from from the east from Syria at the time because the Umayyad were in Syria but his mother had roots from Morocco another important role that Spain has played uh, I would say in the development of uh, humanity um, um, or human science if I may say um, what happens is that uh, before yeah I would say before the, f uh, the sixth seventh century kind of science remained in uh, in Greece like a lot of uh, books remained written in the in the Greek language and that's it that uh, that's how it was with this philosophy uh, mathematics and um, a lot of like uh, yeah like social social um, uh, thoughts up to um, but that changed but that changed during the Islamic era of uh, Spain because a lot of these Muslim scientists, they would take the Greek books and they would translate them first to Arabic and then to the Latin languages. So a lot of what Western Europe, Central Western Europe inherited in terms of philosophy, in terms of simply ma uh, science like mathematics, etc., came from the Muslim scientists that lived here in Spain. Again, this was Spain, it's in Europe, so the transfer between Spain and the rest of Europe was very easy. In fact, 
uh, there was like a scientist from France, from Italy. At the time, you know, Italy is like the the Roman Empire. They would send their their the intellectual uh, class of society. They would send them here to to Spain, mainly to the city of Cordoba and other cities. There wasn't only Cordoba, but Cordoba was again. <laughs> We're talking about Cordoba competing with Baghdad. It's like if I tell you a city competing with, I don't know, like with New York City in finance, for example. So this is this was something really big. And Cordoba competed with Baghdad in... So they would say is that when the streets of Paris and London were dark, dirty, full of rats, the streets of Cordoba, they were having public lights, public bath, they were having like routes, designated routes, public libraries, places where people would gather and discuss their ideas etc so we're talking about some serious significant uh, social and scientific development that little to no other western european city or capital had at the time so this used to be the center of of where things were happening whether it's science art architecture literature and it was definitely a multicultural place for uh, for those who try to convince me that today people cannot live in the same place when they have different religions, different uh, culture, etc. So it happened here in the years 800, 900, 1000. So yeah, it's possible. All right, time for a well-deserved break after, uh, after six, seven hours of uh, walking. <laughs> Let me show you my break. <laughs> there we go. Three flavors. This one is with rum, pistachio, and fresa. Some water. Here is your park guel view. Check out the sky. All right, we're going to Casa Vicente. Which is the house of a wealthy stockbroker, the late 1800. And again, it was designed by Antoni Gaudi. It's just out of another planet. Let me show you. I just checked with the uh, with the security guard. He says that the entrance is like 18 uh, euros. It's like to 20 dollars. Just find it a bit expensive for just the house. I mean, I'm I'm sure it's it's amazing and worth visiting. But I don't know. It's the end of the day. I'm a bit tired and uh, <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. Uh, 20 dollars. So yeah, maybe not the time. This is a church called Santa Maria de P. This one that you can see. This is a cathedral called Santa Maria del Pai. It's from, wait for it, from the 13th century. <laughs> In fact, it's even older than that. It's from the 10th century, like the first settlement of the church behind me, the cathedral behind me. And now it's in the Gothic district of uh, Barcelona. The music is so good. The music is so good. <laughs> Let's get closer to him and listen to what he's singing. you have history you have medieval monuments again this is from the 13th century and on top of that you have jazz music and the cherry on the cake you have oranges that are growing like that in the street that's Barcelona <laughs> that's Spain I love this winter it's so peaceful here so calm Wow, welcome to La Rambla. <laughs> this is nice. It's actually parked. Yeah, actually it's um, it was on my list because <laughs> I made some researches and yeah, they say La Rambla. 
I don't know what is this. It's like a ballet. Or you know, theater. Theater del Liceo. Sorry, did you ask creativity? <laughs> I call it culinary creativity. <laughs> Let me show you this. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> now I don't want to eat ice cream anymore. <laughs> so I have the choice either between taking the uh, paella, uh, which is going to be big, or trying these little things, because that's how the Spanish food works. Like this one, patatas gratinadas. It's like uh, potatoes with pesto and some cheese. This is uh, berenjena con miel. That's really tasty. Mushrooms. Yeah, there's a lot of little options here. Ooh, what is this? Fried olives. Is this arancino? Yeah, maybe I want to try this. And all right, the food just arrived. <laughs> Let me show you what I have. These were the potatoes with cheese. This is bread with tomatoes. And these are the calamars. And this is me being happy. <laughs> I like you very much, but uh, I have an important date. <laughs> See you later, my friends. Ciao.